Welcome to the lecture Modeling with Animal Part 2. How to start analysis of networks with interactive modeling. My name is Janine Post and I work at the Department of Developmental Bioengineering at the University of Twente. This work is done together with Stefano Schifo, who works at the Open University in the Netherlands. In order to work with Animo, you first have to install it. So you have to follow these steps to install Animo. There are some additional videos on the course's website to help you with this. You have to install Java, install Upal, which can be done for free for academic use, unzip Upal, download Cytoscape, and then you can install Animo in the Cytoscape website. And then lastly, you have to locate Upal's Fur Vita uh, executable file in uh, Animo. Okay, so we are going to, going to use Animo. In the example here, we have five nodes, A, B, C, D, and E. A activates B, B activates C and D, C inhibits B, and E inhibits D. In the end of the ex this small exercise, we want to get this uh, result for the simulation uh, of D activity. We can start by adding a new session or a new network. If you choose network, choose empty network. In the field where you will draw your network diagram, right click and you will get a pop-up menu. Choose add and node. The name you can enter here it could also of course be the actual protein name. You can then choose what type of molecule it is. Here I chose kinase. We can set the total activity levels and for small networks you can easily leave that at 100. Uh, if, there really need you, if you really need computational power uh, and you have a huge uh, network you might want to reduce that a little. And you can set the initial activity. So for B we set that at 0, for A we put that at 100. You can see that by this color scheme. To connect the nodes, you add an interaction. For this, you right-click on the node that influences the other node, and in the pop-up window you indicate whether it activates or inhibits. You choose a scenario, I will get back to that later, and you choose your k-value. If you know the k-value of the interaction, you can type this in the window, but if you don't know the k-value, you can use the slider to choose from very slow in the case of gene transcription and translation, or fast or very fast, in the case of ligand receptor binding, post-translational modifications, for example, phosphorylation, dephosphorylation. In the description, you can give information about relevant uh, references or the interaction, observations on the lab book, anything that you can see where the description interaction is based on. You can add the duration of your simulation here and then press analyze network to run the simulation. If you do that on the right, you will see the animal results in an activity plot. And here you see A is given in blue and it stays at 100% and B uh, quickly increases to uh, 100%. There is many, many options in this animal results section but I will get back to that later. Okay, back to the exercise. Please draw these five nodes, A to E, with the following parameters and interactions. You then run the simulation for 60 minutes. And this is the desired result. Just a reminder what it should look like. Okay. So now that you know how to do this, you can start making the models that we, you will need for your own research question. Uh, please read Modeling 101 in Gene uh, for more information. But I will 
highlight the most important things here. Depending on the experimental data that you want to model, you can choose different kinetic scenarios. Scenario one, the rate of the reaction is dependent only on the concentration of the enzyme. Or the, in animal terms, the activity level of the upstream enzyme. In scenario two, the reaction rate is dependent on the concentration of both the substrate and the enzyme. And by changing the uh, uh, parameter for uh, the reaction rate, you can change the reaction speed of the products. This is indicated by both the activity colors in the notes, as in the steepness in the activity plots. So you can tell here that if you increase your k value, you will get a higher activity, e is the, and the fastest product formation. Changing the starting activity also changes the rate of the reaction, even when the k value is constant, which is indicated here. The network topology also influences the dynamic behavior of the nodes. So you can change by adding multiple nodes to obtain even sigmoidal activity curves in these cases. In biology, we often observe peak dynamics by which the maximum activity is reached a certain time after signal stimulation. In animo, a node stays active unless you actively inhibit its activity. This is a huge difference with, for example, a Boolean model where a node is inactive unless it's activated. In animo, a node retains its activity unless it's inhibited or turned off. Addition of an inhibitor, such as here, will modulate the node's activity. However, to obtain these peak behaviors, you need to generate a negative feedback loop in which you activate the inhibitor by your node that, uh, that you want to inhibit it. By setting the edge parameters, you can modulate the height and the timing of the peak. In some cases, a node is activated by the combined activity of its upstream regulators. For example, if two upstream proteins need to be both active in order to activate another protein, here A and B need to activate one protein, you can choose kinetic scenario three. Animo has a couple more features that I want to highlight. To edit nodes or edges, you can double click on it or get a right click to get the menu. So if you right click, you can actually get a menu in which you can uh, choose different things like plotting or hiding or enabling um, or disabling the node uh, by which you will not uh, use that node in the uh, simulation anymore, but you also can edit the reactant, which is the same as double clicking on a node. You can also plot or hide uh, something and a, a node, and that will just have an effect on a, whether or not it's put in the final results graph. Okay, at the bottom of the results section, we have a slider, and you can move this to scroll through the timing and activity of your network. And when you do this, the corresponding uh, activities of the nodes in that time will be displayed by the colors of the network. Other graph features are that you can zoom in, you can choose different graph types, for example, line graph or a heat map. You can manage the data series, so manage which data are taken into the graph, change the title of the simulation results, we'll get back to that, or you can export the data to images or uh, CSV files. If you right click on the uh, edge and choose Animo, you can also rescale the k values. And you can do that for one interaction or all the interactions in a complete network. Similarly, you can optimize the k values um, to get an obtained result from a final node. So in that case, all the interactions that have an influence on the interaction that you want to study will be optimized to get, give you the, uh, the final, um, yeah, optimal um, 
graph that represents your WETLAB data. For this, you can also do uh, parameter fitting, uh, and if we need to do that, uh, I can make a separate video of that. Okay, on the results panel, there are other things you can change. You can change the title of the animal results to a name that in indicates what you simulated. For example, so here I change the title. Uh, for example, FGF at 50. That way, if you perform many simulations, you will be able to go back to any of them and know what the simulation was for. Also, you can click. Uh, yeah. So here I use the slider to display the, the activity. And it's my simulation of 60 minutes. I also did a simulation for 20 minutes. I turned win off and did all my results sections actually display what simulation I did. So another uh, interesting feature is the reset to here. And what you can do with that is you can use the slider to go to the end of your simulation. And if you then press the button reset to here, it will take the end values of your simulation or the values at this time point as input parameters for your next simulation. If you don't do this, at the end of each simulation, the animal network will reset itself to the start initial starting uh, activities. So you can either choose to do that because sometimes you might want to simulate what would happen if you first do one simulation uh, with one signal and then you change that signal over time by either turning it off or by adding another signal. In that case, um, all the settings at this time point can be used as input for the next model. So for example, I use the simulations at the end of the simulation in which I turned wind off as a start for uh, a simulation in which I turned interleukin one off. Lastly, you can see the difference on the network in response to different simulations by selecting two data sets and pressing difference width. In the result panel, you will see the variation in activity of the node in time as a deviation from zero. And in the network, you will see if the node is unchanged, which is white, or uh, less active in red, or more active in green at the selected time point. The title of the result is then a combined name of the two data sets that were compared. More information can be found in any of these references.